Okay, so once again, my name is Andy Gestol. I'm the CMO of a company called uh, Wikitude. Um, we have been in the augmented reality space uh, pretty much from the very beginning, I should say, in the mobile augmented reality space um, since 2008. And um, as we already heard in the uh, introduction, it is such a blessing now, um, you know, to have Pokemon Go around because Everybody will have, you know, all of you will have had some touch points with augmented reality by now. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's truly amazing that, um, you know, Niantic put this out in 2016, uh, considering that this technology that they're utilizing is already uh, eight years old. So, but, you know, once again, um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm super happy that this happened this year uh, because, um, you know, everybody will know what augmented reality is simply because they have played Pokemon Go before, or at least they have seen people doing so. So um, I just mentioned that the technology um, utilized in Pokemon Go is already eight years old, and, um, and it's called geo-augmented reality. And that sort of um, you know, uh, transitions me already into my topic, which is you know, to kind of tell you about the three flavors of augmented reality. So as you can see, you know, between these two pictures here, there's um, you know, eight years in between. And on the left, you see um, a picture of uh, our founder um, back in 2008 you know, in beautiful Salzburg, Austria, you know, demonstrating his first augmented reality browser. It was called the Wikitude Travel Guide at the time. And it, it basically worked on the same principle as what Pokemon Go is doing today. So as you can see, you know, it has, this is actually a prototype device. You can see kind of like, you know, the numbers there on the right-hand side. And this was in 2008, the HTC Hero, which was the first device that had the three sensors uh, required to do geo-augmented reality, which is GPS, um, it had an a, a accelerometer, and the digital compass. Uh, you know, those are the three sensors really to make mobile augmented reality possible. And um, so, you know, if you had told me, let's say, you know, three, four months ago that Pokemon Go would come out and it would be the fastest uh, growing app in history, I would have said, you're a fool. There's no way because, you know, this technology that they're using is, is already, you know, eight years old. Um, but enough about Pokemon Go. Um, before I tell you about, you know, the three flavors of AR a little bit more, I want to just kind of touch on our company a little bit so you have a a bit more background on what we do and where we come from. So, as mentioned, uh, we were the first AR app in the world uh, on mobile, on Android, actually, in 2008. Uh, that was the Wikitude uh, Travel Guide. And uh, since then, we've come a long way, and we have kind of you know, transitioned our business to a B2B model. So now we're in the business of providing augmented reality technology to uh, developers out there uh, who want to build you know, great AR apps. And as of today, there's about 10,000 apps that are powered by uh, the Wikitude SDK. And um, we like to you know, call ourselves uh, the leading independent AR technology uh, provider. Today, of course, there's you know, competition out there, needless to say, uh, but we're uh, an independent company, so we're kind of uh, uh, proud of that. So um, we have accumulated uh, about 100,000 registered uh, developers who are part of our community, who are part of our platform now. Uh, I mentioned the 10,000 apps. And then there's an interesting fact um, about you know, the kinds of companies that use our technology also. There's, um, uh, there's a company called bestglobalbrands.com, uh, and every year you know, they come out with uh, a list of uh, you know, brands, the top 100 brands in the world, and you would see you know, Apple and Google and Facebook and, I don't know, Coca-Cola, McDonald's at the top of this list. But as you scroll down, uh, you know, we kind of did this analysis that there's actually 20 of these companies are utilizing our technology uh, today. Not all of them public, but um, you know, some have published apps publicly, some others are doing you know, proof of concepts, so that's kind of cool too. Um, our technology is platform agnostic. Uh, it's a C++ core, so it works on uh, you know, basically any kind of uh, form factor, whether that's a smartphone, whether that's a tablet, or um, of course, uh, augmented reality uh, wearables, or smart glasses, as they're also known. So uh, we've been having, uh, we've been, you know, establishing partnerships with the leading uh, AR smart glasses OEMs, including Vuzix, <coughs> Epson, um, and most recently, actually, um, ODG. So our SDK has been specialized and optimized for these platforms. Um, so if you're 
uh, you know, interested in uh, you know, building applications uh, based on these uh, wearables, then we can provide you with a technology that is specifically uh, optimized uh, for these form factors. So um, I want to play this video real quick uh, because it is basically the intro reel to our SDK. So I think it'll give you um, some idea of you know, what we do and also give you, you know, show you uh, the three flavors of AR um, in there as well. So if you, if you would mind playing the video, thanks. And there's audio too, I believe. There we go. Thanks. Okay, so that gives us all a little bit of background on, uh, on what we do, and uh, these are actually our uh, products. Um, the SDK, of course, at the core of it all, um, and uh, we have some complementary products as well, which is the uh, Cloud Recognition Service and Wikidude Studio. Uh, the Cloud Recognition Service is essentially um, you know, uh, 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 a setup that you need uh, when you have uh, you know, lots and lots of target images that you need to recognize. I always like to uh, mention the example of, um, you know, the uh, wine label uh, example. So I'm sure you've seen those apps where you can, you know, scan the wine bottle and then it tells you like the rating of the of the wine or what kind of wine it is, where it comes from, and so forth. So in those cases, you know, you don't only have like uh, ten wine labels, but you have probably hundreds of thousands of different bottles that you want to be able to recognize. So in those kinds of use cases, there's no way you could do this you know, on the device, on your local smartphone alone. You need a connection to the cloud in order to scale, in order to uh, you know, um, accomplish this kind of um, use case. And then um, I mentioned Wikidude Studio. Um, Wikidude Studio is a web-based uh, authoring tool. So you can kind of think about it as um, you know, the Photoshop of augmented reality. Um, it's very easy to use. You know, you don't have to know any programming languages. You can simply, um, you know, hop onto your browser, go to Chrome, go to Safari, you know, create an account, and you can easily, um, you know, through drag and drop uh, systems, um, you can, uh, you know, create fantastic and very easy um, AR uh, apps and experiences. These are some of the customers um, that are using uh, our SDK. Of course, there's a lot of, you know, big brands that you see here, but um, there's, you know probably uh, so many more uh, customers that you, um, or, or logos that you wouldn't recognize. You know, we have uh, indie developers, we have uh, small businesses, but we also have, of course, you know, large uh, uh, businesses that are um, using our tech. So we're in the business of providing tools, uh, you know, an augmented reality SDK, and of course our main target audience are uh, developers. So we try to make it as easy as possible for developers to build uh, great augmented reality apps. So different uh, developers have different skill sets, you know, like to use different kinds of tools. So we have, um, you know, if you're into native coding, of course, you can do so through our uh, native API. If you um, are really good with web technologies, let's say, you know, HTML5 or, you know, JavaScript, CSS, that sort of thing, you can utilize our J uh, JavaScript API. And then um, if you prefer using uh, you know, mobile development tools, such as uh, Unity, for example, we have a plugin for Unity. We have uh, extensions and uh, uh, you know, other plugins for Accelerator Titanium, for PhoneGap, and also for Xamarin. So again, whatever tools you like to use to build your applications, we connect uh, with these tool sets you know, to make it as easy 
for you as possible. So Wikitude is in the business of uh, providing technology. So our team in Salzburg is, you know, uh, developing computer vision algorithms. You know, of the of the team that we have, you know, uh, three quarters are actually engineers, um, and, and and that's all we do. Um, on this slide, you see our premium partner network set up. So we have about 40 or 42 agencies around the world today that um, can help you build apps if you need help. Um, so these are all, you know, uh, mobile development agencies that have experience, uh, you know, using our technology, that have, um, you know, experience uh, uh, building multiple augmented reality apps. So if you wanted to utilize uh, this, um, you could, um, you know, we would be happy to introduce you to any of these, depending on where you are, depending on what their skill set is, so we can uh, bring you together if needed. So coming back to the original question, um, you know, what are the three flavors of augmented reality? So let me start out with uh, geo-augmented reality. I already, you know, touched on this in the context of Pokemon Go earlier. So geo-augmented reality works, you know, very, very simple, uh, really. Um, what, you, what you do is you take, uh, you know, the, the, the GPS of, of your device that you have at hand, so you have a longitude and you have a latitude of, of your uh, own location, and then you have um, other points of interest, and that could be uh, a Pokemon character, or it could be uh, you know, a hotel, or it could be some kind of you know, other kind of point of interest. And those locations also have a longitude uh, and a latitude. And then what you essentially do is you, you um, put those two into perspective, and when you hold up the device, then uh, because we know in what direction you're uh, pointing the device through the digital compass, and we know at what angle it is uh, you know, up there, we know that th uh, through the gyroscope, we can then render uh, content in between yourself and the object in question. Very simple. Uh, that's what geo-augmented reality does. And of course, it's being used in Pokemon, but there have uh, you know, there've been other games and other uh, applications you know, way before Pokemon Go that have utilized this technology as well. So uh, Ice Age 4, um, you know, 20th Century Fox came out with this, uh, a game called uh, Scrats Not Hunt. Um, you know, similar concept, you know, you hold up your device and then there were, uh, you know, nuts uh, placed in different uh, geolocations and you would go and, you know, collect those nuts. That was the, you know, the concept of the game. Um, another vertical that is, you know, very big on, on, on using uh, geo-augmented reality, of course, is the travel industry. So, you know, Lonely Planet, TripAdvisor, Hotels.com, and many others are uh, utilizing uh, geo-augmented reality to show you, um, you know, hotels, uh, sites, museums, you know, points of interest um, around you, um, you know, through this particular uh, kind of augmented reality technology. So the second flavor is uh, 2D recognition and tracking. And the 2D here refers to the fact that we're tracking uh, two-dimensional surfaces. So you can see here, you know, in the sketch, um, you know, we have a, a y-axis and, and an x-axis, um, you know, uh, and, and it's all about, you know, flat surfaces, and that's why, of course, it is, uh, you know, being used in the print industry uh, very heavily by, you know, augmenting books and brochures and, you know, uh, billboards and, uh, you know, uh, any kind of, you know, CD covers, any kind of, um, you know, 2D uh, surfaces. So, so that's what 2D recognition and tracking uh, is. So MediaMarkt is, uh, is a company, we just saw uh, another presentation in the, uh, uh, in the other room uh, by these guys. So MediaMarkt is using our 2D uh, image recognition to augment uh, their flyers. I'm sure many of you have seen those flyers, you know, that you get in the mail or you see them, uh, you know, flying around in the, in the subway. Um, there is actually a video. I'm not too sure whether I can play that video. If you, if you don't mind uh, clicking on this device on the left, uh, actually, if you go back one slide, and then this device, yeah, that should play the video. There we go. So you can see, you know, when you scan the, 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 the flyer, you know, you get a 3D model of this particular headphone. And then you see also some buttons that you can click on so you can get more information about different products. And of course, there's a buy button too, uh, which enables you then to, uh, you know, uh, purchase um, this particular item or any of the other ones advertised. Uh, and this is, an, uh, this is actually a great example of, of how we work with our premium partners. So um, a company called uh, Takondi, based out of Switzerland, they actually built this application utilizing our technology. 
Okay, um, One Direction. Uh, I don't know if any of you know One Direction, but uh, I have a 14-year-old daughter, so I know them very well. Um, they have uh, actually, last year, they have uh, come out with this uh, biography. Uh, you know, these guys are like 20 years old, and they've already come out with a biography, which is, is kind of interesting in itself. But what they do is they, they, they came out uh, with this application that allows you then to, um, you know, uh, uh, skip through the book and there's all kinds of different pictures and uh, you know uh, different sketches inside of the book and then you take the app and you can you know augment uh, what you see um, so there's hidden content in there there's additional videos of these guys in it uh, there's quizzes and stuff so basically it adds additional value uh, you know to the to the book and it's been a, a fantastic success there's been you know there's great videos also on on YouTube that you can look up um, you know where these guys are you know, promoting it, and uh, it's, it's a fantastic use case. <clears throat> um, here's another e example. Porsche is using um, uh, our SDK. Uh, the guys in Leipzig are using it for uh, augmenting, um, you know, their, their product brochures. So you can see, uh, you know, uh, product videos of the latest uh, Cayenne or Macan uh, or 911. And um, also, interestingly, you can see it right here, um, they, they also have a scanner for um, the license plates. Uh, in you know of, of of the cars that they have in their museum, so you can scan the license plate and 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 with that you can identify the car and then uh, you get additional information about the car that you're looking at in this museum. I actually have not been to the museum, so I don't know exactly what it you know what the experience is, but it's interesting to to note here is that um, this is basically OCR, so the the ability to recognize letters and numbers. Um, this is not our technology, but it's actually our partner's technology, and we have a plugins API. Um, you know, again, speaking a bit from the from the uh, technology uh, perspective, that allows uh, third-party vision technologies, you know, to be integrated with our SDK. So we kind of have this open approach. If there's a special library that you want to use for, you know, in this case OCR, you know, we you can connect that uh, with our SDK very easily. And I also wanted to. Um, uh, you know, show you this example because it kind of goes a bit more into the enterprise space. Uh, this is a company called Daikin. I think it's a, a Japanese company. Um, they, uh, you know, are in the business of uh, selling um, uh, air conditioning units. And you can see this uh, image here on the left. Um, this is basically what they provide you with, and you can print it out, uh, and you can uh, print out in DNA4 or whatever, and then you can stick this image on your wall. And then you use the tablet or use a, you know, glasses or a smartphone or whatever device you have. And then you look at it, and then you will see the 3D model of the aircon unit you know, on the wall. So it, it visualizes, essentially, uh, you know, what that product uh, will look like in your own living room or in your own space uh, before actually buying it. It's a great tool also for salespeople of Daikin, so not necessarily for con uh, consumers only. But it also helps uh, the salespeople to kind of, you know, um, uh, you know, go through the process of choosing r the right unit that people um, that people like. Okay, so the third flavor is 3D recognition and tracking, and this is um, huge. I mean, when you compare this to GeoAR or, or you know 2D um, record and tracking, it is by far um, you know the the area of augmented reality. Uh, with the most potential and with the most anticipation right now and with the most sub-flavors also uh, that I'm going to show you. So we humans see the world in 3D, now Wikitude uh, does too. There's a quick video, um, just again, you know, giving you a little bit of a feel um, as to what you can do with 3D tracking. So in this case, it's a um, you know uh, architecture use case. You're standing on a uh, on a plot, and you want to see you know what that house that you want to build will look like in this space. You know different times of the day, different lighting conditions. Um, here it's about uh, augmenting an outdoor area for let's say uh, for gaming. So with 3D tracking, you can really augment everything. Um, and we will see, and I mean, in five years from now, we will actually be living this. Indoor navigation is another uh, big area. So, you know, like this guy walking through a train station, 
um, you know, trying to figure out, you know, maybe where are the restrooms, where's the exit, where is that store that I'm looking for, where is that track that I need to go to to catch my train. So this is our office in Salzburg. These are the guys that make it all happen. Um, our R&D division in, uh, in Austria. So we could probably skip this. Um, Okay, so I mentioned for uh, 3D tracking, there are some sub-flavors, and one of the sub-flavors uh, is actually object recognition. You know, the ability to, uh, you know, have an object like this and, and, and put it on the table and, uh, you know, understand uh, what this is, what you can do with it, uh, is, you know, from a technology perspective, is a whole nother challenge than, you know, recognizing a media marked brochure. So uh, there's a video here on the left again, if you don't mind just clicking on it. Thank you. Yeah, so in this case, it's, it's a simple toy. Um, you know, there's a little truck. And so as you move the device back and forth, you know, the, the digital content sticks on top of it. Um, you know, even when you move it, obviously, and that's the tracking component. You know, remote control, obviously a very simple example, but you can imagine this being utilized for, you know, all kinds of different machines in the enterprise space, uh, you know, any kind of gadget that you want to explain how, how it's uh, being used. Um, IoT, of course, is a huge uh, area for, for this type of technology. The ability to take things uh, and augment it with, you know, additional information that you draw from the internet. So, for example, you have, uh, have a piece of machinery, and this piece of machinery um, maybe is, uh, I don't know, maybe it, uh, it can tell you like how many hours it has been running. It can uh, tell you like when is the next uh, maintenance due, um, or it can give you instructions on, on how to do certain things on this particular object or this particular piece of machinery. So we'll, we'll see lots more of this um, going forward. The next sub-flavor of uh, 3D tracking is something called positional tracking. Um, let's uh, play that video also there on the left, please. And um, so in this particular example, you will see uh, me actually walking through the staircase at our office. So you can see that uh, as I'm walking downstairs, I'm actually getting closer to the digital content. There's another, there's our little alley also at the office. Again, I'm walking towards it, and you see the trajectory on the, on the bottom right there. And, and the reason why this is really powerful is uh, because you not only understand the three-dimensional room uh, like this one, but you, will, you, also, you also know um, the position of the user within it. So again, this is great for, you know, indoor navigation uh, use cases. You know, imagine going to the uh, uh, Cologne Airport and you want to find, you know, uh, gate A24 to catch your um, plane. You know, this technology will be able to guide you there. Um, actually, it can do it today. Um, so that's positional uh, tracking. I have uh, one other example here, which is um, you know 3D tracking in large-scale scenes, and um, this is all about uh, you know huge uh, you know uh, buildings. And let's play that video real quick, please. Um, if you go back, yeah, there we go. And what's happening here is basically uh, the church that's right across from our um, office, and you will see that the steeples uh, on top of this church have been destroyed during the Second World War, so they're actually not there. But then we use um, 3D models of these steeples and we put them back on, so you get a sense for uh, you know, what that uh, church looked like you know, before it was uh, destroyed. And uh, this is great for architecture. Again, you know, you can, as you can see here on the left-hand side, um, you, know, you can show your customers what a, what a building will look like you know, once you're completed with the uh, renovation and the refurbishing and so forth. So if you want to sell a concept like this to your customer, great to do so. So I'm almost done. And these are the, <laughs> sorry, these are the um, products essentially that correspond with the uh, three flavors uh, that I introduced you to. So um, these things are obviously available on our website. 
I recently published uh, an article on the next web. If you're interested in uh, reading more about the three flavors of uh, augmented reality, you can look that up. It's, I, I call it the love letter from augmented reality to Pokemon Go. And of course, uh, next month we will be in Berlin at the Augmented World Expo. Um, if you want to check us out there, we have, a, we have a, a booth there with real demos, etc. Use Wikitude VIP as the promo code. You get 45% off the ticket. Um, and I think I'm right on time. Thank you very much for your attention. All right. Can I have to the three different flavors again? Uh huh. So that we, because we have three minutes left for the audience then to okay. give you questions. Yeah, that's the one. All right. Any questions from the audience there? Um, could we have the microphone, please, there? Thank you. Um, how do you account for the inaccuracies of GPS sensors for geolocated AR? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question, and, and that's a reason... Um, well, how, how do I put this in the best way? Um, GPS depends on, uh, you know, you being outside, you uh, not having any distractions near you. So if you're, if you're standing next to a railroad track that has a lot of metal and magnetic influences, the accuracy of your GPS and the accuracy of your digital uh, compass are, are really not all that great. So the experience of geo-augmented reality is, uh, you know, can be compromised because of this. That's also the reason why geo-augmented reality doesn't work inside. Because, I mean, in here, you know, it's very tough to get a GPS location. Um, there are, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of the apps that were previously built with uh, geo-augmented reality in the, you know, let's say like five, six years ago, you know, for the same use cases, let's say in travel, are now being tackled with 3D tracking because it's more accurate. So there's, there's a little bit of shift. Okay. Is that on? Uh, there's one more, and then I think we are out of time. Hello, I'm Tom Lehman. I'd like to know um, if there's already an interface available for Google Tango or other um, indoor navigation uh, systems and sensors. Sure, sure. Well, uh, Google Tango is, is, is great technology, uh, and the devices uh, you know, that they have put out, I mean, that Google has put out are, are fantastic. Um, we, as Wikitude, we focus on, on the devices that are out there by the billions uh, today. Um, so we focus on uh, you know, iPhones, on, on uh, Android-powered phones um, that, are, that we all carry in our pockets because, I mean, in 2016, not everyone has a Google Tango device, and it will probably take you know, several more years until we get to the point that we have a you know, significant enough uh, penetration out there. Um, I mean, Lenovo um, is, is the next uh, OEM that's coming out with a Tango-powered um, uh, device. It has been delayed, but it's probably coming out these days. Um, but it's making up maybe 1% of the market, if at all. So that's why we don't focus on, on, on these um, uh, platforms, but rather on you know, standard iPhones with uh, mono cams um, that, uh, you know, that require completely different algorithms than what Google Tangle does. I hope that answers your question. Uh, we will focus on indoor navigation with another f um, speaker later on after okay, the... Okay. Well, well, anyway, we, 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 um, you know, the 3D tracking, uh, the positional tracking uses something called a SLAM technology. So uh, this is uh, uh, you know, very well suited for, for indoor navigation because it understands your three-dimensional room that you're in and it maps it. And then it also understands uh, your position within it, which is exactly uh, what you need for indoor navigation purposes. Okay. Um, to sum up, um, would you agree with the Gartner hype um, cycle that we will have in five to ten years augmented reality as a mainstream thing? Um, I think I, I certainly um, uh, am very, you know, uh, optimistic about uh, AR, um, you know, being ready for the masses. Uh, needless to say. But uh, now, you know, coming back to the very beginning of my presentation, uh, I mean, Pokemon Go, and I hate to kind of, you know, drill on this so much, but it, it, really, it really shows that um, AR uh, can be hugely successful, and it can be hugely successful on, on you know, regular devices uh, like this. And, um, you know, we will see uh, so many more AR apps, you know, on the same scale going forward. 
as we progress and as the ecosystem all comes together. Mm. I don't have Pokemon Go, but I'm really happy and looking forward to see the handyman doing all that stuff with the augmented reality. Maybe then I don't need a handyman anymore. I can do it myself. Yeah, you can but have remote assist and people can help you. Yeah. The experts somewhere else, they can tell you how to put that nail exactly. in the wall. Exactly. Well, thank you so much, Andy. Right. Thanks.